the discussion of the noise ordinance. I'm going to say the noise ordinance because we're not quite an ordinance yet, but we're getting there. Um, and so um, I was asked, previously I allowed a speaker, I'm going to make sure everybody understands this, committees are for council members to discuss issues. We cannot discuss them any other time other than in a committee or in an actual council meeting uh, legally because under the Sunshine Law, right? Anything that's coming before us for a vote, we are not allowed to discuss behind closed doors so that you see what's happening, which I think is a very good law in many ways, but in some ways restrictive. So committees are for council members to discuss. Now, previously on this issue, I was asked by um, representatives of Janice Live if I could allow their representative to speak for a short period of time. And I did that. Uh, and it was uh, former Mayor uh, Bill Foster. And so uh, some of the downtown condo representatives came to me and said, you know, we think that was a little bit unfair. We'd like to have you let, our represent let us speak. And I said, well, no, it's not going to be in us. It's going to be a one person for the same amount of time, five to seven minutes. Um, and as it turns out, their, their presenter was former mayor, is, is former mayor uh, Bob Ulrich. And so we are going to let him uh, do a short presentation to start off the meeting. And he's right here. And I want to be clear to everybody, though. This is it. There will be no more speakers in committee. Um, that is the only time that council members have to discuss issues. There's back-to-back -back committees. They're scheduled for an hour and 15 minutes. So anybody else requesting to speak at committee will be told no. Uh, but where you do have the opportunity to speak is every council me meeting, there's an open forum at the beginning of the meeting, at the end of the meeting, or before an item. You can speak then. You certainly are welcome to send emails, to, to have personal one-on-one -on -one meetings with council members as their schedules allow. So there's opportunity for discussion. Just this is the point for city council members to have their discussion. So uh, Mayor Ulrich, if you'd come forward and... We're looking forward to hearing you from today. And we will stick strictly to five minutes. And if you overflow to seven at that point, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it off. Right, right here, Mr. Mayor. Right, right here. Right, right there. Yes, sir. I haven't had a lady present me a chair. <laughs> I should have stood up. And <laughs> Thank you. We're glad to have you here today. Welcome, Thank you. Sir. It's nice to be here. Uh, Chairman Cornell, members of, of council, I'm Bob Ulrich, uh, practicing attorney. My office is there at 146 Second Street North, Suite 310, uh, here in downtown. And I'm here representing the interests of the Downtown Residents Civic Association as uh, the association relates to the, the, the matter of the proposed noise ordinance amendment adoption. So I need to. <laughs> take a moment with a brief aside because it's germane to the issue uh, that's gone before you. I was in the city's employ from 1987 to 1991, and it was during this time that the following incident occurred. Sometime during the winter of 1990, I was sitting at home uh, in my residence at about 26th Avenue North and 2nd Street, and uh, the phone rang. It was near midnight. I picked up the phone and there was an irate citizen on the other end of the line who proceeded to berate me in the city uh, for its failure to uh, enforce uh, an ordinance that allowed her to sleep at night. The noise was unbearable, she claimed, and uh, that uh, the city should do something about it and ought to be ashamed of itself. Well, I listened to this thinking perhaps she was overreacting and that I'd go see for myself. I uh, left the house, uh, my car was out front, and lo and behold, the next door neighbors had two uh, teenage boys, and they were playing their stereo <coughs> in a rather uh, loud <coughs> decibel range, which I ignored, got in my car, and started towards downtown. In a short couple of blocks, I realized that the noise I attributed to my next door neighbor's boys was, not, was coming from somewhere ahead of me. And so when I arrived downtown, uh, I was able to identify the venue as a downtown venue, which was uh, emitting the, the noise complained of. So the, the matter of, of uh, noise, urban noise, is not new. It's been around a while. 
In fact, that incident occurred 28 years ago. And so whatever uh, the city on that occasion did, uh, it was inadequate. Uh, the, the city enforced the ordinance that was in place at the time. Uh, but obviously, whatever it did uh, and hadn't met the, the criteria, or what then or since, subsequent, has not met the criteria of a suitable balancing act between the interests of uh, the downtown business community and the downtown residential community. So I understand uh, that there are approximately half a dozen venues from which these uh, objectionable noise levels uh, emanate. Uh, the businesses are probably tenants, but they may be owners. And as a result, they have a, a decided investment in downtown, either by virtue of the rent they pay on leaseholds or the fact that they own the real estate themselves. But the uh, downtown condominium residents are practically without exception. Is that, does that mean it's time to quit? <laughs> No, sir. No, I sir. Maybe you were ringing no, the buzzer on me. No, I think we have construction <laughs> outside. I just want to make sure. A little noise. Yeah. A little noise. I've been thrown out of places before. And I thought that perhaps this was just another example. But anyway, any rate, the, the downtown uh, condominium owners are practically without exception uh, owners of their residence. Now, assuming arguendo that the number of noise offenders uh, is at half a dozen mark, uh, it's a minuscule number beside the number of condominium owners living downtown. So we have a, a somewhat of a lopsided ratio of interest holders. Uh, literally hundreds of condominium owners against a few business owners who uh, have violated or at least are making noises that are unacceptable to the downtown residents. So from my review of the city staffs, uh, considerable efforts to propose an ordinance which would respect the rights of both categories of downtown interest holders. A proposed ordinance has been submitted to you and frankly my client would urge its, its adoption. Having experienced more than one unsuccessful effort to regulate urban noise by ongoing policing, policing and enforcing, uh, a long-term solution requiring constant monitoring to determine the noise level of the music and enforcement of the ordinance limits uh, is likely the long-term solution. A successful balancing of rights will have to initiate a continuous monitoring process and if violations are found, the ordinance is going to need uh, to have meaningful, provide for meaningful penalties. It seems that the Goodwin Abernathy decibel proposal, which is before you or coming before you, um, comes to you with an abundance of research and due diligence. They, they've done their job. It appears to be the balanced answer to the matter of unfettered urban noise in downtown. So the answer is, uh, what do you do? The answer is fairly simple as I see it, the right thing. So what is the right thing? It seems to me that the right thing would be an ordinance that's designed to reduce 2,500 complaints, annual complaints, to maybe 50. You folks hold the key to, uh, frankly, to this is solution. Uh, you can take the bull by the horns and refuse to be beguiled uh, by scientific and political sophistry that seeks to minimize uh, the truth about the unfettered behavior of noise, of unacceptable noise. Uh, and frankly, we're looking at, at a half a dozen businesses who trumpet their dependence on being able to trample on the rights of uh, downtown residents or go broke because they are unable to blast ear splitting noise until three in the morning. Or you can recognize the ratio of a substantial number of downtown owners of units uh, and recognize their interests as well and call to account uh, those offenders of the noise ordinance, which hopefully would be implemented. <clears throat> so I urge you, uh, this is a balancing act. If it were easy, it would have been done by somebody else. You wouldn't be here having to deal with it. <laughs> if we'd done our job 28 years ago, I suspect <laughs> that you wouldn't be here today. We obviously didn't do ours. So. 
let me urge you to take serious consideration into effect. They've, and, they've done a lot of work on this ordinance. And, and, and thank you for staying right within that time limit, sir. Uh, <laughs> exactly seven minutes. I, I appreciate it.